Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. Today we're gonna have a Shop Life quick tip for all those people that are ever going to install a transmission. So I've had a lot of questions, one-on-one -on -one diagnostic questions that have resulted mainly because people, whenever they were installing their automatic transmission back on their car, whether it was for some kind of rear main seal replacement or even for a transmission replacement, while they were doing so, they did not do it properly and they pretty much ended up trashing the whole transmission. So I'm gonna show you guys how to prevent that. It's one quick step that you should be doing whenever you're taking off your transmission. And this mainly applies to all automatic transmissions with the torque converter. So with me today, I've got a automatic transmission and I'm just gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about right here. So this automatic transmission came off of the E39 BMW and this right here is a torque converter. So you have a torque converter that bolts to the flex plate that's on the engine. The torque converter actually has to slide into the transmission a certain way, which allows the torque converter to go into the crankshaft from right here. It will uh, sit in the back of the crankshaft and then you're gonna bolt it with, you know, whatever bolts you have on your torque converter through the back of the flex plate. But the main issue is a lot of people don't have these torque converters pushed in all the way onto the front oil pump that's in the transmission. And what happens when you put this transmission back on the car, so when you're bolting it up to the engine, this might not go in all the way or it might be in too far. So when this is pushed out too far, there's a certain amount of space that this has to sit inside the crankshaft with and also where these contact the flex plate. So if this is sitting too far and you don't have your torque converter slid in all the way into the transmission, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a gap between the engine and between the transmission. And a lot of people will just assume that the reason that gap is there is because the transmission, there's dowels that go into these holes for the bell housing. So people will assume that the dowels are not going in. So they're just gonna try to crank it down with the bolts that go from the bell housing to the engine. And when they do that, they end up putting so much pressure on this torque converter that actually messes up the section that I'm about to show you right here. So I'm gonna pull this torque converter out. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess, but gonna do it for the video. Okay, so no mess. But as you can see, there's two little notches right here on this torque converter. And this is gonna be on every torque converter, mainly because these notches have to go into the two prongs that are inside of the transmission. So that's what engages that front pump to pump the oil through the transmission, get it into the torque converter as well. And when you don't have this lined up properly and those prongs slid in all the way, what's gonna happen is the prongs might be over here and there's no gap for them to slide in. And when you're putting the transmission onto the engine and you secure it with those bell housing bolts, without this notch there, they're just gonna push against those notches, they're just gonna push against those pins on that transmission. And then what will happen is you might be able to actually close the gap between the engine and transmission. So you might be able to get everything secure. You might even be able to get those flex plate bolts to the torque converter if you have everything lined up properly as far as the holes are concerned. But as soon as you turn the car on and the torque converter starts spinning, it's gonna shear those prongs inside the transmission. And once those prongs get sheared, you have to replace that whole front section, that whole front oil pump. So what you wanna do whenever you have your transmission off, your automatic transmission, you wanna make sure you get this torque converter slid in all the way. So the easiest way to do that is you actually look where those notches are on the transmission and just see exactly where they're at inside of here. And then you wanna position this torque converter while you're sliding it in to get into those notches. So usually, as you can see on here, there's three stages. The first stage right here, there's splines that are inside the torque converter that are gonna go on there. Second stage is on this one. And that third stage is gonna be for those notches inside the torque converter. So let's get this torque converter in and see how it actually slides in. One other thing, before you ever install your torque converter, if you're doing a transmission replacement, make sure that the torque converter is filled with transmission fluid. You don't wanna run this dry. I mean, theoretically, if you're doing a, a used replacement transmission, the torque converter is probably still gonna have some fluid in it, so you might be okay. But it's always good practice to make sure it's filled up before you put the torque converter back onto the transmission and before you put the transmission back onto the car. Okay, let's try to put this torque converter in and see how it feels. All right, so I know, I see, I can see my pins through here that are gonna go inside of that torque converter. One's right here and one's right here. So they're usually gonna be 180 degrees across from each other. So if you see one, just look for the other one right across from it. 
So you can see one pin is right on top of here and the other one's on this side. So now when you're putting the torque converter in, you want to try to get those notches lined up somewhat. Alright, so we're in to the first stage. Now we're into the second stage. Oh, there's the third one. Now we're in all the way. So now you can see there's a lot less movement. There's still gonna be some movement because it's gonna let it move you know, up and down on that shaft just a little bit. But you saw there was three stages. So you saw the first one, second one, that third one is the one that engages that front pump with those prongs on the torque converter. Now, a couple of other things when you're putting your automatic transmission back on, almost every manufacturer, they're gonna have a couple of dowel pins either on the transmission bell housing itself or they're gonna have them on the engine side. Sometimes when you pull the transmission off, they get mismatched, they'll probably stay stuck on the engine or they'll stay stuck on the bell housing. But you wanna make sure that those dowels are not burred up anyway, because when they're burred, that's gonna make it a little bit harder for that bell housing to you know, mate to that engine surface. So make sure those dowels are nice and clean. You can even put a little bit, a little dab of grease on it to help facilitate drawing it in. Another thing you wanna make sure is some manufacturers for their starters, they actually have a pin that helps align that starter onto the transmission. So I know BMW does this, and you can see right here, here's the pin that aligns that starter. It's almost like a dowel pin. And what you wanna do is sometimes it just gets corroded. And you might notice this when you're pulling the transmission off, it's kinda of hard to get the starter off. So what you might wanna do is just clean up this dowel, get all the rust off. Um, you can even clean it up on the starter side where it accepts the dowel. Make sure there's no corrosion there. Just makes it easier to slide everything back in. Now, another thing when you're replacing your transmission or even just, you know, if you have it off, you always want to flush out the transmission cooler lines. So the best way to do this, you're going to have your transmission cooler lines off whenever you have your transmission disconnected. And what a best way to do this is just get like a fluid transfer pump, put it on one side uh, of one of the hoses, because there's going to be two, one inlet, one outlet, and just pump in new transmission fluid through there. And it's going to pump it all the way out until you start seeing the new fluid coming out. Once that new fluid's coming out, the transmission cooler has been you know, pretty much flushed out at that point. That's always good practice, especially if you're replacing your transmission. Chances are something went wrong and you don't want any debris stuck in any of the lines. And then another thing when you're replacing your transmission, it's always a good idea to replace any of the seals that you have access to. So as far as the transmission would be concerned would be the input shaft seal, output shaft seal, transmission pan, transmission filter. Um, the other thing would be the rear main seal also other stuff that's available or that you have access to while the transmission is being pulled off. So that would be like exhaust gaskets, uh, the drive shaft center support bearing, drive shaft flex joint, the transmission mounts. And it's always good practice to replace the engine mounts whenever you have your transmission removed. Uh, mainly because whenever you have the transmission removed, you're gonna put a lot more stress on the engine mounts because the engine is tilting back and forth. It's resting only on those engine mounts. So it's always a good idea to do that after the transmission has been put back on. And that will just make sure there's no other vi extra vibrations that you created, or if the mounts are already worn, they're just gonna make it a lot worse. Besides that, that's it for this quick tip video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you need any one-on-one -on -one diagnostic assistance, make sure you go to, web make sure you go to my website at www.shoplifetv.com. We also have quite a lot of cool merch on there. Make sure you guys check it out. We'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks for watching.